This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to this week's edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Don, it looks like we're looking down the barrel of another major hurricane. Right now, this is Monday, Tuesday, excuse me, and uh, 180 miles an hour wind. Well, let's hope instead of looking down the barrel, we get a ricochet and maybe get a glance and blow and get that thing out of here. That would not be nice if Irma came here on the heels of Harvey. Uh, anyway, we're at Bergeron's Boudin and Cajun Meats all right here in Port Allen. Boy, a great place, one of our favorite places to do a show from, and we got a lot to talk about. We kicked off the hunting seasons this week with the dove seasons. You made a good hunt. I had a good one over in Mississippi, and there's still plenty of time left to get that in. Yes, and I got to be the, the new governor. I, I want to brag on him. I don't care where you, what your political affiliation is, but the man with his military background, and you watch the way he handles stuff that he's been in office. It is amazing. You know, and I was talking about I always amazed at how you handling your time with so many things you go on radio, TV, magazine. And, but here's a man, and I'm always complaining about my time, but here's a man that was in, he was in uh, Lake Charles with the president on Saturday. He goes all the way back. He was going to LSU first game in New Orleans. He goes to his home in Amy, he goes to church Sunday morning, and he comes spend two hours on the Andrews Dove hunt. He He's got there. a helicopter, huh? We uh, need a Paradise, he Louisiana would, helicopter. That's what we so. need. Can you afford to go along with the money? Uh, uh, come, put it on the company's account. We'll you got a lot of money. Work. But he's amazing. And God, he was talking about, he was sharing stories about how much the governor in Texas been calling him and thanking him for all the people sure. in Louisiana and all of the uh, organizations in Louisiana, but mm -hmm. wildlife and fisheries and the other people with Homeland Security. And while I'm talking about Homeland Security, I want to give a shout out to the wildlife and fisheries. I call them the Fab Five. These girls, they work all these tournaments. They have been calling around and they're going to be going to these shelters where these kids are sheltered in, mm -hmm. permanent people and being there a while. And they bring in their little fish and all the little games that they play with the wildlife and fisheries they do in a lot of these fish camps. So uh, I want to give a shout out to Danica, Megan, Rebecca, Michaela and uh, Kristen. I call them a Fab Five. You see them at all these tournaments. They see them working with the kids who wish to fish, and then all the fishing days they do with the wildlife and fishery. So that that's it. I want to give a shout out on that hunt. And I also, I got we did a segment. I want to say Chris did a segment. We did a segment with Mike Gerald. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Mike Gerald can went through two, two of his business for flooded. Uh, half his family was flooded, his daughter and everybody else. And when he, when he recovered, he's man that goes to work and does it. He does a lot of gifts and handouts and stuff he does for CCA and other places. And also ProDrive, one of the people who've been with us for years. They've been doing a lot of th different things for us and helping me. They're helping us with the trailer with Storm 22. But, but Mike, it, he's like the the little bunny, the ever read the money. He, he just don't ever stop. Chris and I went over there and pinned him down to give some tips on trailer. Some things that are simple you don't think about, like air pressure and everything. So we got a little interview with Mike. Good, we got an H&H &H, uh, tournament report in addition to some fishing results. We also have the results from the Gaydon duck calling competition that took place at the Duck Festival. We'll update you on who those winners were. Take a look ahead to the teal season. That's not far off if you're a waterfowler. And of course, our Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report. And unfortunately, we've had a couple of tragedies in Louisiana on the water involving some young people. And I want to share that with the audience. And if it can help save a life, it's worth talking about, despite being a really horrible story. All that's coming up from Bergeron's Houdin Cajun Meats in Port Allen. 
Well, you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Pod's moving in storage. I need to clean out my study. We'll deliver a container. My brother-in-law's moving in. Maybe he'll help you pack. He's lazy. We can refer some professionals. It's just until he finds work. We can keep things at our storage center for as long as it takes. I am not happy about this. Or you can keep your things on site for quick unloading. Did you say freeloading? I said unloading. I heard freeloading. I'm sure you did. Store on site or let us drive your things to our secure storage center. Pods, moving in storage, solved. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, family, and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana, and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us, whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and hunters got their quick fix with the dove season. That's the first of our major hunting seasons that kicked off this past weekend. Weather was pretty good, all in all. While we had bad weather the week before, and it really kind of messed up some of the real dense populations. Everybody said the same thing. We had we were holding plenty, plenty birds, and then when the storm weather came through over this way, as a result of Harvey, it kind of pushed them off. But some people didn't, and they really had good numbers of birds. I was hunting at Crane Creek up in Poplarville, Mississippi. Uh, this would be what I would consider a little better than average hunt, not near as good as last year. He was one of the ones that had a good population of doves, but it kind of moved out with the weather, but they came back enough to put on a good hunt. My little nephew, Drew, had a great time. You know, kids love dove hunting because they get to run around. They don't have to be still. They don't have to hide. The weather's usually pretty good for them. Uh, we had some little turtle doves and some of the Eurasians showed up in addition to the morning doves. Uh, people got a chance to bring their dogs out there and remind you if you're going to be hunting during these early dove days, bring plenty of water, take care of that dog and keep an eye on them because they can sure get out of, get out of control and get out of hand real, real, real fast. And one thing you need is good about dogs hunting doves, it's difficult for them to smell those doves when it's hot like that. Especially I really believe dusty. they, they, they Especially sense. Especially once they plow field and if it's dusty and exactly. rain. Yeah, it, They'll run right over them. Oh, I think yeah. they see them as much as they do smell them. So it's good training time for dogs. Uh, and then we had a great uh, uh, dinner with them that night. We went to watch the LSU game and we cooked some dove pepper poppers. And you'll see right here, it's pretty easy stuff. You get the jalapeno peppers, clean out the hulls, get those seeds out, unless you really like them hot because they'll burn you up. Then you get some uh, cheddar cheese or cream cheese, either one, whichever you like. Put that in the pepper. Then take a piece of the dove breast that's been put on some Cajun season, your favorite one, wrap it in bacon with the toothpicks and throw it on the grill about three to five minutes on I either side. Oh, good. wow. That's some good stuff. Good. But you know you got LSU. Yeah. Well, let's, let's stop one minute. What about that defense? What about them Tigers? They're looking good. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Right. A lot of freshmen play, too. We're going to want, keep an eye on LSU. They yeah. may have a better season. Well, you got any shots of this duck? Well, yeah, we got, some, we got some photos we took. And mm -hmm. now you went on a dove hunt, a little bit different nature over there in Tangipahoe Parish, right. the annual Travis uh, okay. dove hunt. Been going on for years and years. Tell us that, how that That's went. it. You've been there a bunch uh -huh. of times, Chris and them and that. Uh, Travis is trying to keep the tradition up. And his uncle Billy had been in it. And by the way, uh, his, his grandpa Billy, but his uncle Terry, Terry lost his son. Remember that tragedy right. deer hunting thing, hunting up in camp. And, and Terry has been spending his time going all over the state in different churches and speaking about safety mm -hmm. and about how important it is to check the stands and everything. So he's doing a lot of good. And he's doing it in honor of his son. But, but Travis, 
I guess he gets it from his grandpa, his mama, his daddy, and everybody. They got people that have been coming in. I'm talking about getting more and more people. But the things that make it stand out is they cook. When I first started going, I used to bring a lot of the food, bring jelly, boudin, and stuff in them. But then they used to got these guys from Gonzales and since in the jambalaya capital of the world, they come in and cook everything and then his mama and all his aunts and all the people that they mail and the whole family gets together and Mama's still there. You now, Mr. Billy used to love to ride on there, give kids, bring them cold drinks, bring the guys beer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sanders was there. You know, Dr. Sanders is 93 years old. Dr. Sanders has been coming at a hunt for 50 years. We call it since I've been going in this group of people, I think it was almost, a, I think it was the 29th annual. So here was some, you talking about the kids, the government was making fun. He had girl, you know how they got dub boys when you go all over? Right, right. Yeah, the, Travis's daughter and all their friends, they just be around the governor. Uh, you and, know, food and, and kids really. and family, that's all part of dove hunting. That's what makes it so much Right. Fun. And, and you got till uh, this weekend, if you're in the south zone, if you're in the north yeah. zone, you got till the 24th of September, and then two more splits after that, so that's you don't have to quit hunting them. Well, it was all about the kids. They had so many kids, I didn't want to read them. Over. I got to say all their names. Chris, Chris got the doctor best as can, but the governor, the little while he was there, shot well. It was unbelievable. I got a couple shots of him. In fact, I was trying to suck up to him and talk to him and ask. I, I had the camera. It went off on me while I was talking. I missed a Muhammad a better shot. So here we are. Don, we got Don first, and then we'll be over there in Kentwood, Louisiana, with the Travis annual hunt. I'm Harry Goldsby. And I'm Daniel Goldsby, and you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Tom Play and I'm from Ethel, Louisiana. Michael Passman, Kitwood, LA. I'm Adeline McHugh and I'm from Ethel, Louisiana. I'm Parker McHugh and I'm from Ethel, Louisiana. Blake Allen from St. Francisville. Wyatt Barbie from St. Francisville. John Travis Day from Kitwood. Boyce Taylor from Kitwood. Dallas Taylor from Kitwood. I'm Nanny from Kitwood. <laughs> I'm Dane Passman from George from Kitwood. Keegan from Louis Hammond. William Neal Boudreau from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Charlotte from Baton Rouge. Hardy Goldsby from A Meat. I'm Emily and I'm from Ethel, Louisiana. I'm, I'm William Boyd um, from um, Convent, Louisiana. I always wanted the kids to have a good time and to be able to hunt first, so that's one thing that we continue here. Um, I want to recognize Dr. Sanders. Where's Dr. Sanders at? Dr. Sanders is 93? 93. 93, so when's your next birthday? April. April. Um, Dr. Sanders is, has been coming here uh, many years and, and really is a, a great outdoorsman and, and a great person and a, and a great doctor. Uh, we've been knowing him for, for years and and uh, we, we're glad that you made it here this year. Well, it was a pleasure to be able to come. And uh, nowhere will you find better company, better food, and uh, be treated any nicer. Yes, sir. That's we, one thing you can count on. We're glad you're here. Uh, so anyway, just like always, um, and, enjoy yourselves. Um, it's all about the kids. Let, let them get hunt first and, and keep an eye on them and make sure they're safe and um, also try to pick up your shell hulls. Um, you know, there's so many shells have been shot in this pasture for I don't know how many years so it, we have to pick them up and or they just kind of get in the way. Um,
You got it low? There's no way a dove would be able to make it across this field. Oh, he, them, Davidson told them, right, come from that away, you better let some pass. <laughs> Good shot, Governor. What first shot? One shot. I'm gonna put the gun down now. <laughs> you gonna quit, Governor? No, I'm not gonna quit. One shot. Yeah. What you think about that, Travis? Pretty good. First shot. That's He's right. one for one, 100%. That's right. <laughs> F.J. Eastman from Covington, Louisiana. <laughs> John Laborde, Hamburg, Louisiana. I'm one of them Voiles boys. Looks like they might start flying. All right. Hey, about you. I want to thank y'all very much for that service. Thank you very much for coming over here, sweetie. You got bird girls, huh? That's right. <laughs> Pretty girls, too. Y'all come sit down over here? Somebody put a good shot on that bird. Maybe. Uh, he down. I got a uh, daughter who's 21, and we had lunch there. I said, I said, Sarah Ellen, you want to come duff hunting with me? He said, she said, no, because you're going to run me all over the field to pick up the birds like you did the last time I hunted. <laughs> right at you, go. Travis, here we are another year. Your mama said it's been 28, 29 since I've been coming. We don't know exactly. But uh, there's a lot of work this. Why, why you do it? I, my, my grandfather, Billy Travis, uh, he, he always did it. And, and uh, I just kind of followed in his footsteps and, and continue to do it. Um, some of these people that, have, that are here hunting have been coming for years. And um, now some of their kids and grandkids and great grandkids are, are hunting here with us. Your dog working pretty good. It been out on a hot day today. What, what's the name? Tell me about it. That's Gal. Um, Gal should be, I guess, eight or nine years old. This your first dove that hunt? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's my girl. I see that girl. Tell me, what you think about this? You like to see him fly or you like to see him die? Um, kind of both. Live them both. Yeah, you want to do this again? You want to start yes. shooting a big gun? <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, good. Y'all look like having a lot of fun. Yeah. Dr. William Gladley, we were here 12 years ago. You had just came here being up all night at the Pete Mavis Assembly Center working Katrina. That's right. Tell us a little bit of that story you remember. Well, I mean, it was Katrina and, you know, everybody was gloomy. We'd been working in Baton Rouge taking people in. But we had a dove hunt, a very special dove hunt, and I said, I'm going on this dove hunt, I'll be back and I'll, I'll see some more patients when I get back to Baton Rouge. Yeah. 
it was chaotic, to say the least, though, wasn't it? Oh, uh, well, you know, tell me. Okay, it's so chaotic. I remember seeing some of the first people coming in from Chalmette, where I used to do a lot of fishing, because no one knew what was happening in Chalmette. But there were some, there were some horrifying stories. The Blackie, I've got the Blackie Campo story, if you want to know it, because they rode Katrina out in Frank Campo's shrimp boat in the Violet Canal. Can you imagine doing that? I, I can imagine <laughs> one thing. There were doves everywhere. You that killed your limit that year, and your son was a little bit of boy, and he was running them down. They, that's right. And he's here with me today. He's all grown up. He's a third-year medical student at LSU. This is the chef, Mr. Calvin. Look, look what he got. He got a generator. He got his fan. I'm going to say, but it's been a good day even without that fan. That's right. <laughs> How many years you been doing this, Mr. Calvin? Oh, man, about 10, I guess. Bird hunting. Yeah. I, I used to have bird hunting until about 10 years ago. Yeah, I'm surprised. There's, there's been a few birds, but not like it. I thought it was. Yeah. We killed a good many yesterday. We killed over 400. That's what they tell me all the time. Y'all better be glad I wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Logan Gladney. I'm from uh, Baton Rouge. Where are you from? Uh, Jacob Castle, Kentwood, Louisiana. You did good. Look at here. He got shelled all over the ground. Got four boxes. You're looking good. How many you got? 14, one away from my limit. about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Hey y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like black bear, whooping crane, bald eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit LAWFF.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit LAWFF.org. Dot org. Welcome to the news segment of Paradise, Louisiana. And Gary, big news if you're a hunter. Dove season is not only open, but teal season is going to open up on the 15th. Very unusual opening this year on a Friday. And that's in order to get the full amount of days with the latest dates possible during the month of September. We've got a front approaching this week. It could be good news, it could be bad news. It could be bringing birds in, it could be moving birds out. We'll know a lot more after that. I Plus, we got a storm, storm too. Out. That's well, the one I we'll want see to what effect out. the storm has, but if you haven't got it yet, remember if you go on teal hunting, basic hunting license, state waterfowl stamp, federal waterfowl stamp, and the one that most people forget if they forget anything, HIP, Harvest Information Permit. Make sure you stress that to them if you're buying it at a, a register to get it. Now there's also been some confusion this year. If you buy your your license online or at a and you get a receipt on it, it tells you on there if you buy your federal stamp that way instead of at a post office that it's only good for 45 days. Well, the reason it's only good for 45 days is they actually going to mail you a real federal duck stamp, you'll get that to take you through the back end of the season. I had some people panicking about that, saying, why was it only good for 45 days? I'm paying the full $25. That's why. You'll get your stamp coming right. to you. It makes you be covered, like getting a receipt when you move. Right. Or uh, confirmation. Thing. But look, Don, 
we had a bunch of closers last week, and mm -hmm. some of them were just temporary, like right. Elmer Island, Rockefeller. They're all opening back up right now. Uh, but always stay, if you want to find out what's closed and what's open, you can go to the Wildlife and Fishers website. And I, 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 they'll probably even post some of the National Wildlife Management areas. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we, I think they're all of them are open up right now. And uh, even in some of the dove ones, they canceled them opening weekend hunts. I don't know if they're going to open them back up. But, but uh, if you want to find out, just go to Wildlife and Fishers and look at them. So, uh, I got some news, but it's not, it's all about festivals and things that are coming up. The Acadiana Hunter Awareness is coming up on September 23rd. And that's a big deal. It runs from 10 to 3 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock p.m. It's a Crowley Police Range. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to have people from uh, Delta Waterfowl, they're going to have people from the Wild Turkey Federation, they're going to be shooting, they're going to have classes. They're going to have everything there. It's really almost like a hunting and fishing and day. And an admission with, charge? I, I don't believe. I don't see it. I didn't see it on there on the flyer. We're going to run the flyer. But if you got any questions, you can call. Also, we got hunting and fishing days coming mm -hmm. coming up pretty soon at the end of the month. So you check your calendar from that. I think they cut them down. They're going to, I, they usually had them in Monroe and Menden. I think right now I'm probably just, I know Woodworth and Baton Rouge, remember, be back open. Last year, the flood killed the one in Baton Rouge. So uh, you also look on their website, Wildlife and Fishing for Hunting and Fishing Day. That one at Woodworth draws about 3,000 people every year in this pack. So it should be open up and going wide, wide open. Uh, September the 9th, Bass Pro, the FLW High School Open. It'll be at the Washita River. You can look at two angler teams. Of, mm -hmm. You can see where we're going to run the dates on there. You can call the Bass Pro Shops and find out more about it if you're a high school team and want to be involved. September the 7th, over there at the American Italian Culture Center, they have a what they call the guns in the hand of artists. When I saw that, and I think about all the Italian gun makers, I said, man, this is going to be very interesting. But there are going to be stories and everything going on. But it's not about the Italian gun makers. It's all about the confiscated guns that have been all over the country, especially in New Orleans. These guns are confiscated. And these artists have been taking pictures. And these artists are putting and making a book about them and everything else like that. So if you want to go see something different, and that's September the 7th, you go to the American Italian Culture Club. So. All right, we also had some sad news. But it's something that needs to be told. And that's the story of some young people losing their lives. We had an incident um, up near the Sabine River a couple of weeks ago where a man who was under the influence was intoxicated, uh, took some boys on a tube, uh, was dragging them around and went a little wide and it ran up on the bank. And unfortunately, one of those young men lost his life. Uh, then this last week, we had a head-on collision between a jet ski and a bay boat. Uh, they were two boys, 11 years old, were jumping wakes kind of a fun pastime on a jet ski and they evidently were not seen by the oncoming boat. The boat didn't see them. They jumped over a wake and were hit head on, ejecting both boys. One's life jacket came off. It wasn't a good fit. Uh, he died, unfortunately, a boy by the name of Griffin LeBlanc. The other boy at this time is still in the hospital in serious condition. So this, you know, bears the warn, you know, when you get this kind of weather, summertime, the kids want to get out there and have a good time. But there's limits, you know, you gotta keep things under control and, and, and educate the kids because a lot of times they're not thinking clearly and you need to be very, very safe. And of course, alcohol and, and water, that never mixes, it's not a good mix and it can end tragically, not just for someone losing a life, but for the person involved in the accident that has to live with that for the rest of their life. So safety is uh, of the utmost importance. Be safe out on the water. We'll be back with more. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana.
Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, family, and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana, and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us. Whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. Hi, I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana Fish Fry. My new favorite, the Cajun Fish Fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. We're in Port Allen today at Bergeron's Boudin and Cajun Meat. And if you're in uh, this area for lunch, you want to stop by. i got some great groceries here. Gary, you know, something that we take for granted a lot of times is our trailer. Boat trailers, utility trailers, they spend a lot of time in our driveways. But when you need them, you really need them. And I've had <laughs> you one... You can make a bad mistake by taking Absolutely. Them. I've had mine from Mike Gerald's now. God, I think I've had it for 10 years. It's on its second set of wooden floorboards and still... I can't tell you how handy that thing comes in for hauling the ATV. If you're making a trip and you need extra room like a long uh, deer hunt trip, you need extra ice chests and equipment, it's great to have that to well, haul we've been Since I've been in business, so we also have Pro Pull and these Central Hitch. Mm -hmm. Pro Pull, I might have said Pro Drive, we've got all these words, I get tongue tied, but let me pull, tell you Pull Drive, what, you know, kind of yeah, same Doug thing. Yeah, Doug Gidros has always been his boy, played ball for me, but mm -hmm. they've always over there. But Mike Gerald has been stepping up so much lately. Right. For CCA, Ducks Unlimited, different people, and he does it. And uh, poor Doug and him are so busy. I've, uh, I've always tried to add Doug to do something, but Mike's is, is a natural. He did a great job. Chris went over there and went over there and he handled this. So this is some tips that I think everybody knows. I learned something new. I, mean, I always thought I knew everything about it, especially with tire pressure. I mm -hmm. didn't realize how important it was. I'm Mike Gerald with Mike Gerald's Trailer Depot. I'm here today to give you a few tips on trailering safe and getting to the water safe. Always start off and make sure that your coupler is attached to your truck or car properly. Make sure that if you have a two inch coupler, you have a two inch ball. If you have an inch and seven eighths coupler, you have an inch and seven eighths ball. If it's a two and five six inch coupler, a two and five six inch ball. The most common error that people do with all trailers is, is they'll have the ball right here. They will close this latch and that ball mount is sitting on top of the ball. It's not sitting in the ball like it's supposed to. It is most important that you make sure you've got the right ball and ball mount while you are hooking up your boat or your trailer. Also, always run a pin and clip, or you can put a lock on it, either or. Make sure your safety chains are crossed. They're supposed to be crossed, it's for a reason. If the thing comes off the ball, the safety chains will catch it. Make sure that your lights are hooked up. Make sure that you move your dolly jack after you've got it on to the ball. Also. Make sure that you always strap your boat in the front and it's nice and tight where it's not bouncing going down the roll and you pull your hook eye off of it. Always, always check air pressure before you leave. Most boat trailers are a five lug system. What is the most important thing about trailering where you're not having blowouts and you're not having tire problems. It's 50 pounds of air in all five lug boat trailers. It is not very hard to do. It's most important. Whatever the tire says on the side of it, coal, is what you need to run. But 99% of them are five lug, 50 pounds. Always. Grab your wheel, 
pull it back and forth, pull it back and forth. If you feel slack in the hub, if you feel slack in the hub, well, at that point, you need to check it out. You need to see if your lug nuts are loose. You need to see if your bearings need to be tightened up, and you need to check and see if you need them to be serviced. Most boat trailers have an easy lube system on it, and all you do, you have a grease insert at the end, you give it a shot of grease. When you see the grease move, stop. If it's an oil-bathed system, then if you don't see any oil on your wheels, and you don't see any slack in your hubs, then leave it alone. After you've hooked up, before you leave and go on a trip, go to the rear of your boat, check your blinkers, check your lights, check your brake lights, and make sure that you're strapped down. There's always hook eyes in the back of a boat where you can strap it down to the frame of the trailer, or if you have to, run a strap over the uh, top of the boat. It is most important the only thing that's holding this boat on this trailer is that one hook eye up in the front. So you want it tied down in case you were to get into an accident. If you get into an accident without it being tied down, as soon as it comes off the trailer, uh, off the truck, the boat's going to go one place and the trailer's going to go another place. These safety tips will do nothing but help you get there safe. Thank you. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving in storage. Solved. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Welcome to the H&H &H Turner Report. And Gary, we got some folks sending us their results in, which we really encourage. Send your results in to Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. What do you got And I agree with mine them last week. Also send them three weeks in, in advance of the other oh, the tournament event. coming sure. up. And don't send the results like Don was picking on me last week. But you send them three weeks in advance. We, we should help your attendance. I hope we do anyway. Uh, you got some results from the Lafayette Kayak Fishing uh, Club. The Lafayette Kayak Fishing Club. I want you to make sure you get me straight because uh, they come with all these. What you call these letters? They, that's what acronym. You, uh, acronym. Acronym. Yes. Yeah. So, I just like when they write the name out. But uh, by the way, they they did what we asked them to. They've been sending us a report. Had a very good turnout of tournament mm -hmm. results. There was a speckled trout redfish cup. First was Kalon Johnson. Yeah. We've been seeing him a lot in Empire and all over. We've been seeing him people. He's the best of Louisiana award winner. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. He sure did. I remember that now. And Scott B. Envenue was second. Doug was third was Doug Menifee. And the spotted eight spots, Josh Burton. So and uh, thank y'all. That's the way to do it. Send us three weeks in advance to so we'll announce it. And then you come up. When that weekend gets there, get it to me by Sunday night and we'll be on the following week. And all you kayakers, if you're hungry for a victory, you got a good chance if you get into the Venetian Isles Fishing Rodeo. They have a kayak category, and they don't have a lot of people entering at this point, so get in on it, and we've got the information on the screen for you. That's coming up September the 23rd. We've got some more tournaments coming up, too. I know we got the ladies' tournament coming up. The ladies, yeah. The ladies' rodeo, that's October 6th and 7th. It's been going on now almost 10 years. I know we the first ones that helped them and started uh, it's a fun deal. I like to go there. It's in October. It's right between the splits. 
And uh, you know, between teal season and the regular duck season, that's what I like. And I'm not a big deer hunter. The ladies like to be there. I go there and dance. They got dancing contests. They got everything else going on over there. Go see us at Bridgeside Marina, Marina, October 6th and 7th. It's well waited on. It started out, first year was amazing. It had 400 people. Now it's, up, it's over seven or 800 participants. So, uh, I, Don, I don't know what other term we've got. Benicia, I think that's it. All right, if you got one, report. send it to us, Gary, at Paradise, Louisiana. And if you don't send it three weeks in advance, Gary will get mad at you. So please don't get Gary mad. You don't want to see that. All right, coming back after this, it's our Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report here on Paradise, Louisiana. Aggressive. Modern. And durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away. I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. And welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. Joining us for this report is Gary Krause, one of our photographers. Guys, it looks like it's say goodbye to Snapper for real this time. September 4th was the last date on it. There's some possibility there may be a little extra days in the fall, but we won't know that till all the quota numbers are, are figured out. But uh, I think that was a real tribute to our Department of Wildlife and Fisheries to come up with La Creel to be able to really maximize the catch of Red Snapper this year. There were a lot of people got to enjoy catching Red Snapper that would not have had we not implemented that new management system. I don't think system. anybody's got a complaint this year. Rennie, Absolutely Rennie, not. Rennie Carter sent the pictures to us from Red Snapper that they caught in the Timberlale blocks, in the South Timberlale blocks, and, and he, he was singing their praises. You know, he said, you know, Bliv, how much that added to that summer, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked to the different captains, that Captain Coulomb down in Venice, and said the same thing. You know, he, he was, he was look, I, I don't know if you want to say we look, Look, it wasn't too courteous, but he was trying to make cut, had cutting remarks about, about the wildlife and fisheries, or you know, the federal people the way they did, but it turned out it beat a lot, it was a lot better than what it could have been. Sure. Well, we don't know at this point while we're recording this what Irma's impacts are going to be to the Gulf of Mexico, but I would not think this is probably going to be a very good weekend to try to do any offshore fishing at all. Uh, inside may even be impacted on the inside. We, it was hard getting fishing reports last week. Not a lot of people went because of the rain. People sitting on edge, people leaving to go help do, perform rescue work. Uh, but really the fishing, uh, Cocodry has been one of the areas that's been real consistent this year. Uh, talked to, yeah, Gary got some information on that. Robbie Campo over at Shell Beach said the fishermen that went out caught some real mules out there. I talked to Glenn Sanchez, a former owner of the Breton Sound Marina. He went out and they caught, I think, I think it was four or six fish all over 24 inches. Tofield Bourgeois still talking about some big trout out at the islands at Breton and Curlew and Gosher out there. So the fish are there, just going to get the weather for the saltwater guys. That's yeah, the same way at Grand Isle. It was hot as a pistol right now. Tommy Vidrain, by the way, the final results are getting in. He, then another year, he's another winner in his family. Him and his wife, Jay, Jay Lamb, were, they were fishing the Ipogis. Mm -hmm. Most of the time fishing it around the, the rocks and everything in the jetties. And uh, he had a kayak came a little close to him the other day. He was making fun, but the guy was catching fish and he was laughing. By the way, Tommy threw back, I think he said five or six fish that were over 24 inches. Mm -hmm. He threw them back. But he kept a bunch of fillets. I, I wish he sent me some of them fillets. 
And want to congratulate you again, Tommy, and thank you for sending these reports. He never holds back anything, tells you what he catches them on. I appreciate it. Uh, Bootsy Toops, one of the old mainstays down there, sent me a picture. He was fishing pokies and croakers, and he was catching some beautiful size trout out of Bridgeside. Uh, we had some reds from Bruce Dodge coming over there fishing in bull reds. They were hammering them big reds in the past. You saw what they did to ride the bull, so they still there. And then Bobby Black, no picture. He getting lazy or he just tired. He had a pretty good schedule himself too. Running to Grand Isle to the ball game, back to Grand Isle. Bobby, good friend of mine, he's gonna be sending me some pictures. And I hope he's telling me about the ducks up there in Tensaw. So he's gonna go back up North Louisiana with a, with a box full of fillets. And, but the main thing, last year, my mother told you he was catching them on dead shrimp, on, just on a jig head. Okay, and he put a little trail on it. Mm -hmm. He come back and told me that later, but you know, he was catching those trout when, when he didn't have no live shrimp. But he had live shrimp when they run out of 75 shrimp. H and H sparkle beetles. I've been getting multiple reports on people fishing double rig. H and H sparkle beetles. That bait has been around so. for a long, long time and put away a lot of fish. Speaking of good pictures, uh, Toby Cooper, our friend, he and Gary went out to Delacro. Look at these beautiful pumpkins, he calls them. Gorgeous orange redfish with a mix of bass, and look at the face on the tail of this redfish. Pretty unique looking fish. Gary, what can you add for salt water? This well, Gary. We, uh, we spent two days out of Cocodry and started at the north part of the bays, worked our way south every day, just kind of playing with the tide. Uh, the water was a little dirty from Harvey and all the wind we mm -hmm. had, but with two days worth of tide movements, you could see we had went from like one foot of visibility down to two feet and we caught limits of trout every day. It's just mm -hmm. been a phenomenal year. Throwing a double rig, blow white chartreuse, trail it with an avocado red flake, H&H mm -hmm. &H and, and the wedge tail. The wedge tail gives it more vibration, but you can chase birds and we're catching keeper trout under the birds. And when they, you see the shrimp jumping, I like this power bait. It's an open at night curl tail power bait. Just throw that on a jig head. It won't sink real fast because you're normally fishing shallower water when you're around the birds. And we had limits of trout every Did y'all go out to the islands? We we had our limits before we got to the islands. Boy, yeah, they got terrible. Bull Red's mammy oh, out there. You right were mostly Terrebonne Bay? Terrible, uh, Lake Barre, Terrebonne the Island Bar -Ray. area, down in the Timbalier and Terrebonne. Mm -hmm. Barre Lake stays in between Wonder Lake. I know we're getting time to the winter time. We used to fish that all the time. The first time I ever started fishing redfish, you know, just like we're fishing bass and we'll go down to Montague. We used to fish Wonder Lake and the canals in there and then Lake Barre, we'd go out there and catch some of the bigger trout. Gary, and Don, you tell me, how, how old is that bait right there? All them guys at Cocodri, that's all you could you could find them sometime. After mm -hmm. the white with the red spot and the chartreuse with the red spot, then they came out with this. That's how long yeah, it's been around. That, that was it, but they were fishing redfish down there and swimming that thing on a on a dickhead and then putting a the spin on it. It's crazy. The trout never learn, do they? Oh, they don't catch on. I don't want them to learn. <laughs> all right, we got fresh water. What y'all hear in fresh water wise? Man, they had so much rain over on the western side of the state, everything was all swollen up. Even on the eastern side got a dunking. All the rivers over there were high, but that should be yeah. changing now. A little drop in the water levels, and less Irma reverses that. Well situation. the good thing is we have an outgoing tide for most of the day now. The high tides mm -hmm. are in the morning, so we're getting a nice good outflow during the day. Well, I got some great reports for. coming back. First off, I, I want you telling people, I mentioned last last week the fish you caught at Bob Black. You, well, you and Mr. Tomplay it, and Mr. Ellis. It's not any easier than the humdingers. I went through four different blade combinations and finally got Tony Landry's green blades mm. and went to I that. I hope they can see that color on the that's that, that a, shade of green. Blade. It's, it's a special blade that Tony has made, and it, it's actually a powder coat, he was telling me the other day. I thought it was dip. He's got this special color. Somebody uh, does it for him, but uh, as soon as I put it on, the first cast, I had a bass four feet away from it. I saw the bass charge and come get it, so I threw it the rest of the day. But top waters, don't, even in the middle of the day, you got to try black. It's mm -hmm. something about black, and I think it's more the silhouette that the bait puts out. Could be. Uh, uh, that's them boys. <laughs> that's them boys I used to fish with. They used to go crazy. They used to paint them blue. 
Them things in there. Well, Slam you know, dunk. This, yeah. This has got blue in it. Mm -hmm. I know. But I think it's the I'm dark color the sometimes. Well, but, this is the way it is. How about now? The now, prize. that's my story. Go ahead and tell that's my story. John Paul, who one of the first guys start taking Gary and I down in Venice and showing mm -hmm. We're fishing a frog and we introduced him right. to, to the frog that came from Cream. We'll the frog, that. remember, yeah. But this here, the Chigger Crawl, we were getting them and having them. But he's been fishing his Chigger Crawl down in Pasalusa, down in their canes. They still having trouble, Don, with, with the sheephead and right. the brim. Right. They're fishing on the edge of those canes and they're still, they're eating them up, but they're swimming it now. They're not letting it sink and they, without a weight. No weight. No weight, they're throwing it up at the end and swimming it out. I guess they're good casters, or they might can use it on spinning rig, but he sent me some beautiful fish. Beautiful fish and a few red but that's fish. That's also fishing the scattered mosses out in the channels in front of all the bank full well, of you and Jeff were houses. catching on that bait for that's years right. now in Venice. But if you want to go to punching, and you want the sapphire blue, the best bait that you can punch with is a Berkeley Habit Pick Boss in a sapphire blue. Those four legs give a lot of action. You can punch it down through the water highs and throw it up in the What canes. size sink? It all depends on how thick it, the grass is? It depends on how thick the vegetation is. I'd start out with an ounce. If you got to go to an ounce and a half to get it down under the, uh, the water hyacinths, then that's what you just got to do. Yeah, well, that's some of the baits you're going. I got some reports from Toledo Bend, too, Don. Uh, Ed Terry, the guy over there with uh, SS and S H God Service, he said they went out last Friday and Saturday. Two foot rise, he just didn't think there any way they're going to be catching fish, but they just wanted to get out. They wanted to go check to see how the high water is affecting Toledo Bend, seeing if anybody's camps was on there. Whatever happened, guess what? Unbelievable. He said they are using live minnows, they caught some tremendous. Look at the size of these back, I mean, these. <laughs> These sacolet, so it's really big speckled fish. Crappie. About speckled crappie, about that. Speckled crappie. Well, yeah. they call them speckled perch. That's right. Some people do. Don't make yeah. fun. Well, they call them all kind of things, white perch. Paper mouth, yeah. Yeah. So I call them suffering. Yeah, yeah, me too. All right, yeah. now, we're going to have some fun here. Gary, you came in, you know, if you fish long enough and you're around fishing, you see some pretty strange things. Right. And you came up with a really weird-looking critter, and you've got it in your possession. It has been identified, but I'd like to throw this out to the audience to try to guess what this is. Is this a shrimp with a crawfish claw? Is it a crawfish with a shrimp tail? Is it a hybrid? Is it one species or another? Is it foreign? Is it exotic? Tell us what you think it is. Send your guess in to Gary at Paradise, Louisiana, and next week we'll explain to you exactly what it is. I think we ought to put it up on the Facebook page, and that way everybody can leave their good. comments. How's that? That's great. Great idea. Chris will handle that. So we I'm won't sure. tell you yeah, what Yeah, I don't, we do, think I don't it do Facebook. Is. Chris does Facebook. But I'll, I'll, I'll give this hint. It was caught in uh, a shrimp net out of Bay Terrebonne. All How's right. that? There we go. And send your other pictures in to us. We love them, Gary, at Paradise, Louisiana, along with your reports, your tournament information. Uh, it's your connection to us, and we share that with our audience. Can I leave one more thing? You, it's your show. You're talking you talking about that bad. Last week, I mentioned my grandson, you know, his bachelor party and all them 16 kids over there. I forgot to give Chris the picture, but they were on my porch, and they were over there, and uh, having all them fun and games, and they were catching bass, too, by the way. And Are we going to see a movie called no, The Bachelor Party just, 2 out of no, this? No, there was no video no camera there? No, you, Everybody behaved themselves? No strippers, no None no, of that no. kind all, of all Good boys. And and Good boys. Drank a little too much beer, though. All right, we'll see you all much. next week. Another edition of Paradise, Louisiana.
Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.